Welcome back to AP Chemistry. I'm Jeremy Krug and in this video we're going to be learning about hybridization of central atoms in molecular structure. Now to introduce this let me just show you the structure of CH4 which is the methane molecule. Now if we start to look at that um, you know here's the periodic table and we know that carbon would be in the middle. It has four valence electrons associated with it, four hydrogens around it. Each one of those has one valence electron associated with it. So when you draw the structure, it's going to look something like this. This is a very uh, basic and uh, essential structure that, that you'll learn in AP Chemistry. Now, this looks very fine, but when you start to examine this a, a little bit closer, it may seem that there's a problem with this structure. You know, carbon is making four bonds, you know, with these, these different hydrogen atoms. But when we look at the electron configuration of carbon, it may seem that this structure couldn't work because carbon, we can see where it is on the periodic table here, and carbon has this electron configuration, 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. And that means it has four valence electrons. When we plot these four valence electrons using an orbital diagram notation, like this, we put the two 2s electrons right here, and then the 2p electrons go one, and then Kuhn's rule puts the other one over here. So when you look at this structure, it really looks like we only have two electrons that are available for sharing purposes. There's one here, and there's one here. So it might make us think that carbon can only make two bonds, or can it make two bonds, or can it make more than that? Because according to this, it looks like it can only make two. Well, there's something that carbon has to do in order to make more than two bonds, in this case, four bonds. And that is something called hybridization. CH4, you know, the, the carbon specifically in CH4, has hybridized orbitals. So this is what it looked like before. Well, something happens. These four orbitals undergo a hybridization. So they kind of, you know, become somewhat the same thing. And all four of these will meld into each other and make these, one will go into each of the hybridized orbitals. So it's like if you want to uh, take a glass of milk and take half of that glass of milk and take half a glass of orange juice, you could mix it together and you'd have a full glass of something that's half milk and half orange juice, which sounds pretty gross, to be honest, but, but that's some hybridized uh, drink. You know, it's half OJ and, and, and half milk. Well, that's kind of what's going on here. We have a hybridization. It, it's, it's one part S and three parts P. And so as a result, we call that SP3 hybridization. We don't put the 1 on there, we just assume it's there. I guess you could call it S1P3, but we just call it SP3 hybridization because it's one part S, three parts P. Now, how do we figure out the hybridization on any central atom in a molecule? Well, we could do that little exercise for every single molecule all that we could ever have, but that would be time consuming. So let's find a shortcut. Here's the shortcut, the easy way because this is AP Chemistry the easy way. We're going to take the number of sigma bonds that are attached to that central atom. We, we learned about sigma bonds in the last video, don't forget. We're going to add that to the number of unshared electron pairs that are on that atom. And we're going to get a number between 2 and 6, most likely. And if the number that you get is a 2, the hybridization is sp. If the number is 3, it is sp2. If the number is 4, it's sp3. Usually, on the AP exam, they will keep it to those three hybridizations. They will not go beyond sp3. But uh, your chemistry teacher and your chemistry textbook may want you to go beyond that. If the number is 5, it would be sp3d, because you see there are only three p orbitals. you got to go on to d after that. If the sum is 6, then the hybridization is sp3d2. So that's how you do hybridization. By the way, you have to learn that. Okay, That's not going to be given to you on the AP exam or a test. You're going to have to know how to do that. And 
have those learned. So let's try a few examples here. Let's determine the hybridization for each central atom in these molecules. We'll start with silicon dioxide. I've already drawn the structure for you. So once again, how many sigma bonds are attached to that central atom right here? Well, there are two double bonds. And don't forget, like we learned in the last video, every double bond is a sigma and a pi. So we have two sigma bonds here. That's two. And are there any unshared electron pairs on the central atom? There are not. So that would be a zero. Well, two plus zero is two. And the hybridization that goes along with two is sp. So that's the answer for that one. sp hybridization. Let's try water, H2O. Now, uh, we've drawn this before, but let's take a look at the hybridization this time. So we have two single bonds here. Each one of those single bonds is a sigma bond. So I'm going to put a sigma for each of those. And we have two unshared pairs, one here and, of course, one there. So we have two sigmas plus two unshared pairs. Our number is four, and that corresponds to sp3 hybridization, according to our last chart. So hopefully you're seeing how this works. Then we have the nitrate polyatomic ion. So we have that drawn already. We have a single bond, and single bonds are always sigma bonds. So I'm going to put that there, two sigmas. And we have a double bond, which is always a sigma and a pi. So we have three sigmas attached to the central atom. There are no unshared pairs on that nitrogen, are there? There are others over here, but those don't count. Only that are on the central atom. So 3 plus 0 equals 3. So the number 3 corresponds to sp2 hybridization. So that's how you do hybridization. I tried to keep it simple here, but you could do the same thing for more complex molecules like sp3d and sp3d2. And you could even, in theory, go up from there. I hope you learned something about hybridization in this video. Hope you found how to do it the easy way. If you liked my way, if you enjoyed these uh, videos or, and, and these examples here, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. I'm Jeremy Krug. I teach chemistry. I want you to get a 5 on your AP Chemistry exam. So please give me a thumbs up, and I hope to see you again on this channel where we can learn some more chemistry together. Chemistry.